Hey folks, Blackcross here, and with another discussion video. Today's discussion video, I want to go ahead and talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake being episodic. Uh, for those of you that don't know or haven't heard this information, um, Square Enix has showed off Final Fantasy VII Remake gameplay footage at the PlayStation Experience. Um, the gameplay footage definitely looked amazing, it was fantastic, it was something that people were so hyped up for. Some people was not for it because of the fact that it was action based, but personally for me, I was excited for this one. It, it, it made me happy to know that this is where Square Enix was going for. On the other hand though, um, this is where things actually got interesting, well, not so much interesting, so much that people were confused by this fact. And that was that it was later on discussed that Final Fantasy VII Remake was not going to be released on an actual physical disc, but rather it was going to be available as a downloadable episode series. So, let's go ahead and talk about these episode series. Um, most people would recognize these series from Telltale Games, uh, from like their uh, Strong Bad series, their uh, um, Walking Dead, I think it was another one. And then of course we've also got the most recent one, uh, the King's Quest series, which I think right now they're either they're fixing to or they just had released their uh, second episode of King Quest. So, from what we know, they released them in parts in an episode-like series. And then after it gets released, depending on how well it does, sometimes they release a physical release. And an episode series is one of the very few things that I don't really look into, mostly because I think it's more or less kind of an unusual strategy when it comes to game sales. I mean, I don't know how they go about this type of business, but to me, I don't see it being any more useful than DLCs themselves, where you purchase the game and then you eventually download addable content from that same thing. and. I don't know, the episode series, I don't know, I've never actually done that before. Uh, so, it's kind of weird for me. Whoop! It's kind of weird for me for how they're going about this. Um, it's kind of weird for me of how they're going about this. Mostly for, uh, their reason that they give for why they're doing this. Okay, and I, I, I looked information for this pretty well. I, I try to look for every detail as to why they were doing this. And the reason they give, on one hand, it's actually a pretty good reason, but on the other hand, I call bullshit. And you don't tell me if you find this a little bit BS as well or not. But we'll talk about the first reason why I like the idea and why I think it's BS. Their first reason was because they wanted to do more development in the game itself. They want to give more content, they want to give more story for the each individual characters. They want you they want to allow you to explore the areas in depth more and more. So in other words, uh, the Midgar uh, area would be its own episode. Um, obviously the next part would probably be from where you go to like uh, Nibelheim, which was Cloud Home, uh, before Sephiroth destroyed it and everything like that. And then the next part is whenever you got ready to encounter Sid. Next part, so on and so forth. Basically, make it an in-depth series and development for the story to unfold, as well for you to explore the area, which is interesting. But, uh... It... it the amount of content that they're going to be put into it it's going to be interesting because, like they said, it's basically a remake, which means they're going to be a lot of different stuff from the original, which makes sense, which makes perfect sense. 
The one that I call BS on, however, this is the one that got me the most. And they said, and I quote, they said that the size of the amount of data that they have for this game would be too much for the Blu-ray dual layer disc to handle. I'll say that again. I'll say that again because in your gamer mind, it clicks. They stated that there was too much data for the disc itself to hold. Let's look back into our brief history of gaming, shall we? The very first time we've had multiple parts, multiple discs in a single game was back in the PS1. From like Metal Gear Solid to even Final Fantasy 7 being a four disc series, then Final Fantasy 8 and 9 being three disc. And the next gen, the only thing that I can remember before I ask my friend this, the only thing that I can remember that would be in multiple parts was Star Ocean till the end of time having two discs and Blue Dragon Odyssey being two discs as well. Uh, I remember my friend TJ was telling me about how there was another game that was multi-disc as well, but it was also a PlayStation 2 as well. Uh, Dragon, uh, Blue Dragon Odyssey was actually on the 360, but that's beside the point. The point is, there has not been another game with a two or more disc since the PlayStation 3 was released. And since then, PS4 and Xbox One has not had a multi-disc series for a reason, because of the Blu-ray disc. It is dual layer, which means it's able to contain more data. And from what I was told, it holds the amount of 40 gigs of data after it's compressed. And I want you to really think on this one. Grand Theft Auto 5 was said to have 35 gigs. Almost the max that the Blu-ray disc could handle, and it still was one disc. And then we got Fallout 4, which I guarantee you is probably a little bit more than Grand Theft Auto 5 has, and it's still in one disc as well. You mean to tell me, Square Enix, that Final Fantasy VII Remake is so big that it is bigger than Grand Theft Auto V and Fallout 4 for the Blu-ray dual layer disc to handle. Some people may have this going over their heads, but for some tech geeks out there, I guarantee you this is clicking too many points of crucial information and it is starting to make sense as to why I say this is bullshit. We've gotten into a pretty far amount into our time. And the fact that companies are now doing stuff like this where a game is released and then later on they'll release patches on top of the game to where you're able to uh, expand on the game itself. In other words, they update it to where the game can handle all that data. And you're telling me that Final Fantasy VII Remake would be too much for even one disc to handle. <sighs> I sincerely have my doubts on this. I really do. I, I really do have my doubts on this one. Because, it's, I mean, you have to have some pretty big balls like Norman sized wrecking balls to say that your game is bigger than what a Blu-ray dual disc can handle. 
I'm gonna keep drilling into this into your heads because this is crucial information. That was something that picked up the most. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. It's like, that was the stupidest reason you can give. Like, the stupidest. I'm not being mad, I'm just saying that this does not make sense. It doesn't. And for many players out there who actually know what I'm talking about, will agree with me on this. They will. Now, that was their reason. Their reason for why they're doing an episodic series. Now, what's my opinion on this? What do I think? I'm kind of on two-sided on this one, and I think for most people, they are too. On the one hand, I'm looking forward to it because they said that they promised that they're going to deliver. They're not going to overcharge in prices. They're not going to decrease the value of it. They're actually going to make them into full-fledged games themselves. So in other words, it's going to be a pretty big game just for an episode series. That's what they've stated anyway, so that's going to be an interesting concept to see if they'll deliver. But my biggest problem, my biggest problem, and you don't tell me if you agree with me on this one, my biggest problem, and I, if Square Enix is to hear this video and have a response, I would like that response to appear in the comments below, in the comments. So, Square Enix, if you're hearing me saying this, you better have a good response to this one. Because I have my doubts. Because of Kingdom Hearts 3, that's why. They released the first episode. Say they released the first episode. How long will it be for us to attain the next episode? A month? Three months? Six months? Maybe a year? I don't think players realize how long it takes for the next episode to be made and released. Kane's Quest took six months. It was released in 2015. Actually, it was released... Hold on a sec. I gotta look that up real quick. Okay, yeah. On Wikia, King's Quest Chapter 1 was released July 28th, 2015. So a little bit in the middle of the year. December 15th is whenever the second chapter was released. So that was... Let's see... Roughly six months, yeah. Almost six months, if not five months, depending on the estimation. So I say six months is right on the dot. That's a long time. The problem with that is that you got players who are hardcore players, and for them to stop after playing the game, only to wait months at a time for the next episode to be released. Um, if this isn't clicking to you, chances are it will. Having to wait months at a time for the next episode, most of us don't want to wait that long. Most of us would rather have it right all there to where we can go ahead and play it all the way through. That's what most of us would do. But it looks like we're not going to be able to do that if it's going to be released in episode parts. But here's another thing that scares me, and there's been proof in some cases, both with smaller companies and with a couple of big ones. And I did not think that companies would have this type of power, but they do. The first episode would be released, and it does not sell well. They would probably have the audacity to stop production of the episodic series altogether and then have that first part removed from the PlayStation Network. 
yeah, it, 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 it's been done. You wouldn't think they would have that power, but it's been done. Konami is a good example. It wasn't an episodic series, but PT was a game that was, well, not so much an actual game. It was a playable teaser, playable teaser, that was released for the PlayStation Network for players to play to find out that the actual game known as Silent Hills was being in development before the whole Hideo Kojima happened thing. And then, about a month or so later, no, it was a few months longer than that, PT was taken down from the PlayStation Network. You wouldn't think a company like Konami or anybody else would have that type of power to have a game removed from a main game stream company. You know, like Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. They're their own bigger company. We're talking about companies that make the system themselves. Not just make games, but make the system themselves. Then you got these smaller companies that make the game and then release it for the public. And then the bigger companies can decide on what to do with that game itself. The fact that Konami had the power to have PT removed from the PlayStation Network should say that they cannot be the first one to do this. Square Enix could easily have that much power to, if Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 didn't sell well, they would cancel it all together and remove the first part. I personally don't want that to happen. I want them to continue out the project all the way through, not stop halfway through it, much less after the first part. But they can. They technically could, if it doesn't sell that well. But most of us are going to wait until those episodes get released, and that way we can play it all the way through. Square Enix isn't thinking with a full deck. They don't realize how players think. They wait until it's released all the way through, and then purchase it. Most players would do that. Not everyone is going to purchase it after day one of part one's release, and then wait months at a time for the full series to be released. No! We're going to wait until it's fully released to see if it actually comes out. It's just, it's a... It's a thing that bothers me, that scares me the most. It does, because on the one hand, I want Final Fantasy VII to actually come to fruition. I want to remake, and I want to see what they do. I want their creative minds to come into play. I want to see what they're capable of. But if it doesn't sell well, chances are they're going to give up on it right away. And most, most of you guys are going to be like, well, what made you think that they'll give up right away? One of the producers, either that or one of the developers, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he stated that this project was a Doom project to begin with. Yes, he did. He stated that it was a Doom project to begin with. And I can understand why he said it was a Doom project. To remake Final Fantasy VII is a risky bet. It is something that either fans are going to love or going to hate. And there has been multiple reasons why they haven't done it until now was because they didn't know how fans would respond with the new remake. They didn't know how what to go about when it comes to making the combat system. They didn't know what new they could add, what they could keep in terms of the original, how big the game would be, how long the game would be. There's a lot of processing that has to be kept. And when you consider the fact that this is a remake, so the story has to be adjusted in some form of way, chances are there's a lot of stuff that isn't going to be exactly replicated. Like, Barrett and Sid's extreme amount of cursing. 
yeah, those bleep parts that you see? They say some dirty mouth words. So obviously, that's not gonna be on there. And I guarantee you there's a number of things that won't be on there. Like, there's a lot of blood and gore in this in this game. Final Fantasy VII had a lot. Don't believe me? Look up some videos when it comes to top 10 reasons why Final Fantasy VII Remake may never happen. Because it would turn from a rated T to a rated M. There's a lot of suggested scenes. Trust me, you'd be surprised. And I can understand why the company say it would be a Doom project. But yet they're going on ahead and doing this anyway. They could have easily ignored the ideal of making a Final Fantasy VII Remake. They're going to go on ahead and just do like, we can't do it. No. I don't care how many times people say it. We won't do it. But instead, they're going to have the gall and go on ahead and make the project anyway. And this raises a bunch of questions. Like, are they still going to do it? When will we see the first part? And when will they continue it despite people's opinions? Because one way or another, I wouldn't care what reviewers would say. This is technically my game, which means I get to decide of if I want to continue playing it or not. And more than likely, I will be playing it all the way through. Because I would be that interested in how much change they have done, or how much detail they put into the game. And trust me, the first part looking amazing as it is. I personally can't wait. At the same time though, I can't help but feel like something's missing when they gave the announcement for it being episodic. It just scares me and at the same time it worries me. Meaning that the wait that we've been waiting for may have been all for nothing. That's just what I'm trying to say. But I wanted to go ahead and kind of give my opinions on Final Fantasy VII being episodic and I want to kind of give a detail as to what they had actually said and give you an idea as to the thought process that should have been taken place. Especially the part of how they said it would be too big for the Blu-ray disc to handle. I mean, I find that really, really dumb. But that's just me. That's just me. I, I have a different thought process that I'm sure some people have never thought. But despite that, let me know in the comments of what you thought after you heard that Final Fantasy VII Remake was going to be in parts instead of an actual disc copy. What, what was your opinion? Do you like this new strategy? Do you feel like it could work? Or are you like me and you have your doubts and you're afraid that it would just fail and never get released? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, this is Black Cross signing off with the discussion on Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.